Hi Jason, Nick from Vulcan Gun. We're going to look at your gun today and see what we got. What we got is a uh, Ithaca serial number 2076336. I checked two different sources of showing it built in 1945. I think you might have said at one time it was 1943, but I'm showing 1945. Overall, Pretty decent shape. It's got apparently all World War II parts on it. The, uh, it's got an Ithaca slide and definitely an Ithaca frame, so it, we can assume it's probably matching. At one time in its life it was blued, and in the process of being blued, they did a lot of buffing, which is normal for bluing, but I'm trying to get in a little bit close now. You'll be able to see that some of the edges have been buffed away. Wait for that camera to focus in. There we go. You can see how some of these sharp edges, for example, good example right here, that edge right there. They buff it and they buff it and they get that edge all gone. All that edge is all, all, uh, all been softened now. All around here, that's all been softened. Nothing is sharp or crisp anymore. It's not terrible. I've certainly seen worse, but just a lot of the, a lot of the fine edges, really, really all of them, and that's normal in the buffing procedure. It's pretty hard to keep. Well, I can do it, but I use special blocks and everything. I don't use a buffing wheel or anything. But pretty much everything along all the edges, you can plainly see everything's been buffed. You know that line is just about eliminated right here. All that is really dull now. There's just nothing left, no sharpness. There's a point here on the ejection port, right? Get better lighting here so we can see it. Right there, that point on that ejection port should be a lot sharper, should be a lot pointier. I'm going to try and show that spot to you better with a uh, Lean this up, gun over here. Get in a little closer. There, right here. That should be reasonably pointy right there. Shouldn't be rounded like it is. So, now let's go into this in detail. A few things I want to point out. I'm going to slowly go over this thing. Point a few things out to you as we're going. The standing is, I don't know what caused the standing, but it's no big, big, big problem. It's all going to come off in the sandblasting anyway, but what I want to point out to you as we start getting into detail on this thing is you got some pitting right there, and if I get in if I get in good and close, let that camera focus in on that for a second. There you go. Now you can see. It's pitted. It's all pitted right there. You can see the pits there. Below it on the, uh, on the frame. Those are all pits. They'll be even worse once I bead blast it. And if we just look over the general surface, you can see there's lots of little dings and marks, scrapes. It's a pretty good little dent right there, just below the ejection port. The, uh, the BNP on this particular one, it's a better lighting here. There we go. The BNP, as you can see, is pretty faded. They've just about eliminated it in part of their uh, buffing process. And if I were to go over this frame and sharpen these lines up, which could be done, this could all be done, but you can see everywhere, if I pull that bit of an angle, you can see the pits. There's a little pitting going on. Nothing major, but it's all there. Your uh, ordnance stamp, ordnance wheel, right in here. That's pretty much gone. There's really no... the whole bottom part of it is missing. Now a lot of these weren't stamped very sharp right from the factory, but the buffing that this has had certainly uh, made it a lot weaker. So you got that stamp, which isn't very good, and you've got that BNP up on the top of the slide, which isn't very good. You've also got the P, the proof fire mark, Turn that so you can see it a little bit better. There we go. Getting focused in now. 
Okay, you can see that P isn't very sharp anymore. It looks like an F right now, but so we got that. Um, like I say, no major pitting anywhere. You can see how the uh, you can see how the mag well catch doesn't fit in the magwell hole as precisely as it could. That's because the edges of everything have been rounded off, both on the catch and the hole itself, on the frame itself. So with two rounded edges going together like that, that's why it looks like it's got such a big gap around it. Once this, once this, if this frame were to be restored, it should be filed. This whole flat, the whole entire side of the frame, all the way, all the way, the whole thing should be filed down. Then this, the, uh, the uh, dust cover, all this can be refiled, and by doing that, all these lines again will sharpen right up again. If I take a thou off the side and a thou off the bottom, these sharp lines will all get nice and sharp up here too. If I take a little bit off the side of the slide and a little bit off the top of the slide, that top edge, that line will sharpen right up. All these lines, they'll all sharpen right up. This thing will look new again. Uh, most of the markings, you know, are still, we got a four there, a Ithaca, probably an inspector's mark of some type. That's still looking pretty good. All this 1911 U.S. Army, it's nice and deep. All this is all nice and deep. You got another British proof mark right there. You got another British proof mark right there. If you can see it, yeah, the NP. That's the same one that's on the top of the slide that's all worn off. But we could have that done with laser if you wanted to. The whole frame has got various grinder marks or file marks or something, everything on it is slightly pitted. The parkerizing won't really hide much of that. Got some kind of hammering or something uh, going on here on the, uh, let's see if I could prop this up a little bit. One second, I just want to prop this up. I want to show you, you can see it, yeah, you should, yeah, you can see it there. It's a bunch of little hammer dings and dents and hammer marks right in here. Same on the other side, I noticed. The other side's got similar similar issues. I don't know what caused them. Get a little bit closer here. Excuse my uh, amateur video work here, but now you can see. There you go. You can see the way the light's reflecting off the, that uh, there's something, some hammering or something going on in this area, so that should be all repaired and filed out. Your uh, inspector mark, the JGA, is just about, you can just barely see it. Barely, barely see it right here. It's almost gone. We could have that restored too. Plus, this line is all buffed. You can see how soft this line is. It's all been buffed. Uh, mag catch and all that, safety, all that stuff is reusable. It's all good. No, like I say, no major pitting anywhere. The uh, grip strap, grip strap is in uh, kind of rough shape. It's been bare metal for a long time. You can see some damage, some gouges right there. But it's just got a fine layer of pits on the whole thing. The whole grip strap is pitted. Plus, you can see the few dings and dents, a few marks and gouges in it. Um, everything else looks good. You know, uh, trigger. Trigger guard, everything looks good there. Uh, one another problem when they buffed it, they didn't remove the front sight. So what happened? You can see it if I turn the pistol. You can see the flat spots. You can see it in the light. The way the light reflects, there you can really see it. How the light reflects, see? Because they didn't take that front sight off, so it was hard for them to get a nice smooth job of polishing the top of that slide with the sight in the way. You can really see a flat spot right there really really see it where the light reflects off it and plus the sight is dinged up anyway so what I would recommend is we pull the front sight off we replace it with a new sight but while the sights off that's when we do the top of this slide take the rear sight off front sight off and I go in and I refile that slide on the top and I do the sides both sides okay so you can see the miscellaneous small dings and marks and you know it's 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 not real bad, but you can see all the file marks. You can see them plainly as day right by the Ithaca and all that, the gouges and the metal. That should all be repaired, filed out, polished out. A little bit of fine pitting going on there. You say nothing real bad, but 
If you want to mint the gun out, that should all be done. All that stuff can be corrected with a file on emery cloth. It just it takes a little bit of time. It just takes a little bit of time. So basically that gives us a pretty good idea of the uh, outside of what we're trying to deal with here. Gives you a reasonably good idea. Um, I'm going to uh, close off now and I'll uh, put together some prices on uh, how we want to do this. We could simply sandblast the gun and parkerize it. You know, take it apart, sandblast it and parkerize it, but we wouldn't be able to repair any of those little issues. Any of those marks would still be visible in the parkerizing. Maybe slightly less visible, but not that much less. Um, yeah, some of your pins too. I notice here this pin is kind of beat up and mushroomed a bit. And so, what, you know, you got some marks and issues in your, in your uh, grip safety. But that's all minor stuff. Like I say, a few hours of file work, probably about, I don't know, maybe four, four or five hours of file and, and emery cloth, and we could pretty much pretty much mint everything back out again. That would be above and beyond, though, the original quote of the park rising. But that's entirely up to you. It all depends on how nice you want to make it. Anyway, I'm going to uh, close off for now, and I'll take the gun apart and take some pictures of it in pieces. Okay? Talk to you later.